Well, well, welcome back. Today we had an indie world, and um, I'm going to be the first to say there was really nothing there for me. Absolutely nothing. But it was 20 minutes long, and I'm going to save you about 17 of those minutes, maybe 16 by summing it up real quick. Starting with Minico's Night Market, basically a sim where there's a bunch of mini games. It's narrative based. You can just do a bunch of things to tap into the Switch's fun nature. Cool. If you were a fan of My Time at Portia, they have My Time at Sandrock, another, dare I say, sim game. If you're into simulation games, this game seems interesting enough. Not my cup of coffee, but again, sim. Now, as if it wasn't enough, played up a restaurant simulator. Yes, you simulate having a restaurant and uh, pumping out dishes. It looks like something kind of like overcooked, kind of stressful sort of thing. Again, if I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of these feel like cell phone games, and that kind of bums me out. And that leads me to a board game, Quilts and Cats of Calico. Yeah, it, it's it's a bo board game where you build a quilt and cats will sit on it, and then you can customize your cats. You know, sometimes I just wonder, who likes these games? I know people do, and I'm not trying to say they don't get any sort of love, but I'm just, I'm curious who likes these games? Now, this game was interesting. Rift of the Necro Dancer. It is a rhythm-based game. Now, the Necro series has had something with Zelda, which I did enjoy that game. It's an interesting mechanic, but it's a basically tap rhythm game. And uh, if you're into that sort of thing, it looks like it's pretty interesting. It, it definitely seems like it's artistically more thought out than some of these other games. And there's one in particular that I'm going to get to that I'm like, I can't believe this is a thing. But anyway... Rift of the Necro Dancer. If you're into that sort of thing, it's coming, it's coming. Now, they mentioned that there's some DLC coming to some puzzle games. Shovel Knight, there's a puzzle game for that. And a little to the left, if you have either of these games, you're getting DLC. And if you're a Cult of Lamb fan, which I am not, uh, you are going to get like a boss rush and a, a different type of permadeath thing. And just different expansions, some extra stuff you can do and some extra missions. And so, Cult of Lamb fans, guess what? You've been seen. You've been heard. And uh, you're, you're getting stuff. Now, I think you might have to buy it, though. So get your pockets ready. A few games. Everybody gets time, uh, time to shine. Animal Well is a labyrinth-based game. Platformer of sorts. It looks interesting enough. And Crime O'Clock. You were solving a crime based on pictures. And you go back in time, forward in time, and all over time. And you do something in one time period. It affects the other time period. Again, a lot of these games feel like they just could release on mobile and everything would be fine. In fact, the next game, Shadows Over Loathing, is a stick figure based game and uh, it's real wacky and goofy. And I tell you what, you know, I don't want to be too negative here, but these games just aren't for me. And, you know, that's okay. There's a really cool sequel to Tesla Grad, Tesla Grad 2 makes sense, which is a Scandinavian-based puzzle game. Again, nothing against them, but not for me. Now, the one game that I did find very interesting was Blasphemous 2. Now, I never played Blasphemous 1, which I guess would be Blasphemous, but here's the deal. I thought that Blasphemous 2 was pretty cool because it's a platformer. Not only is it a platformer, but it is a nice retro-looking platformer, and that was something that I was like, this looks rad. It kind of reminds me of Castlevania. I don't know if it's a Metroidvania, but it is cool enough, and I actually, in watching that, thought to myself, that's a game I will get. Blasphemous 2. And the last one before they gave us about seven games that they didn't explain, they just showed us stuff, which one of them was a Five Nights at Freddy's game, is Oxen Free 2, which is a story-based game which you're essentially just running through different scenes. And uh, it's like one of those interactive movies. It seemed kind of fun. Basically, you are uh, trying to get through some crazy rift in time that is being opened and these portals are being opened. And there's a cult trying to open these portals. This game looks like it's more of a story-based reaction. You can just go from scene to scene. Not my cup of coffee. And they finished this out with naming about six games that, uh, well, they just didn't explain. That was the indie world. I hope that wrap-up helps you save time. And just know that these games are for somebody. But only one game was for me, and that's Blasphemous 2. Let me know in the comments below what you thought was cool. Most of all, happy gaming.